Where does the arrow of time come from? The answer begins with a concept from thermodynamics, entropy. Entropy is a measure of disorder. A shattered glass has more possible microstates than a pristine one. So statistically, the system moves from order to disorder, from low entropy to high. This principle is formalized in the second law of thermodynamics, which states, in an isolated system, entropy never decreases. It's not a law like Newton's, not deterministic, but statistical. It doesn't say entropy can't decrease. It says it almost never does, because the number of disordered states vastly outnumbers the ordered ones. Here's the key. The second law gives time its direction. It distinguishes past from future. A drop of ink diffuses in water, never undiffuses. These asymmetries aren't present in the underlying laws of motion. They emerge from entropy. But if the laws of physics don't prefer a direction, why does the universe start in a low entropy state at all? That's the real puzzle. The early universe, just after the Big Bang, was remarkably uniform, smooth, and low in entropy. But why? This question haunts cosmologists. One proposal is that the early universe was constrained by boundary conditions. The Big Bang itself set a low entropy starting point. From there, entropy naturally increases as the universe expands and structures form. Galaxies, stars, black holes, these are entropy engines. Gravity, counterintuitively, increases entropy by clustering matter, enabling heat flow and irreversible processes. Some theories suggest that entropy might be linked to the geometry of space-time itself. In black hole thermodynamics, entropy is proportional to the surface area of the event horizon, not the volume. This inspired the holographic principle, the idea that the information content of a region of space might be encoded on its boundary. If true, this could mean that our very notion of space and volume is emergent, like temperature or pressure, macroscopic descriptions of microscopic degrees of freedom. Others look to quantum mechanics. In entangled systems, information appears to vanish from subsystems as the overall entanglement increases. Perhaps the arrow of time arises from quantum decoherence. The process by which quantum superpositions interact with their environments and appear to collapse into definite outcomes. This too increases entropy and defines a before and an after. Yet none of this answers the deepest question. Why do we perceive time as flowing at all? One idea, called the psychological arrow of time, argues that our perception of time is tied to memory. We remember the past because it left physical traces, structures that increase entropy. In the end, the arrow of time may be a reflection not of the laws themselves, but of the boundary conditions from which those laws unfold.